There's a teenage wedding in the old folks wish to well. Five, four, three, two, one. Three ingredient recipes are go. See what I did there? I know this is not an instructional video on how to make your own like island thing like they did on Blue Peter, it's a British show. Uh, that was amazing, always wanted to do that. Hello everybody and welcome to the fifth element. A good film, I've quite liked that film. Uh, of the 4321 playlist, uh, this is actually now a playlist and this is the fifth one. So many of you were like, you gotta get to five because then you can do five, four, three, two, one. So there we go, we've done it. We might even do six. And I don't know, you guys are just enjoying it so much. So today we're doing some stonkers. Like we're gonna start off with a pudding, which is kind of a no brainer, but I'm hoping with a little tweak, we'll pimp it up to the max. Excellent smithies. Yes, with some eggs, some lemon curd, and one of these amazing, I've never bought one of these before. This is 50p, a pastry case. It's blind baked already, it's ready to go. We are gonna make a three ingredient lemon meringue pie. That's right, so with this lemon meringue pie, it's a little bit like, I don't know what's gonna happen to the meringue. That's the only concern because we're not gonna get anything to stiffen it or make it glossy like with the sugars. I've got one sort of idea. So it's all about Indiana Jones style, a whip. All right, so we're gonna use the cock reel uh, egg separator, okay? We'll stick that there. Oh, look at that, it stands up. Look like a giraffe. So I'm gonna go for two yolks. Suck one up like this. Nice. Give him a poo that one out. Oh, you absolute donkey. These are because they're room temperature. I just bought them from the supermarket, left them out. Cold eggs do this gadget so much better. All right, let's try that again. Oh, gosh. Hey, it doesn't want to go, does it? So I'm going to end up with three yolks. I'm just, the yolks, I'll show you what I'm going to do with those. It's kind of optional. But let's just get the egg whites first. Oh, phew, we did it. Right, whites, yolks, whites first. All right, so two egg whites. Well, it was nearly three, wasn't it? <laughs> So if you haven't guessed it, I'm whipping the heck out of it, Indiana Jones style, as I say. But what I would normally do is add sugar in. You can see we've got some peaks already. I'd add sugar to make it a bit glossy and also sometimes add some cream of tartar, uh, tartar, tartar, uh, which actually helps to firm it up too. But I'm not doing that because I can't. We're gonna pray, but I have a sneaky plan. <laughs> I was trying to reach for the lemon curd. I'll keep whipping it a bit longer. All right, that is so foamy. Um, it just feels weird to do this, but I'm gonna try it. So this is my idea. Rather than using sugar, I'm gonna take uh, some of the lemon curd and see if this will act as a bit of a sugar replacement, just about a teaspoon to sweeten it. It's gonna flavor it as well. Why the heck not? <laughs> this doesn't wanna turn on. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button, sorry. Oh, doesn't that look like a big egg? Hey, exception. I make an exception to this. Oh, uh, that hasn't worked. <laughs> no. No. So instead, I'm gonna jump cut to me just whipping up some egg whites normally. No, no, no lemon curd in there, we'll just have to be meringue. Do you know what? I still wanna try it. Just a teeny speck of lemon curd, a teeny speck. Like this is an eighth of a teaspoon, like a, just a sixteenth of a teaspoon. Just that. <laughs> right, I'm sticking with it, it's in there. It does smell lemony actually, and that was only a teeny bit as you saw. We'll carry on. The lemon curd then. I've got two jars of it just in case, but first of all, I'm gonna preheat my oven to a very low temperature. Around about the equivalent of gas mark free because we don't want to burn our meringues when it's slow and low, baby. Especially as we're now adding the egg yolks. Egg yolks? Who's egg yolks? You probably know someone called egg yolks. Someone does. So here we are then. This is lemon curd. And don't know if you've ever made it before, but it's really fun to make and very easy. But it does actually contain a lot of egg yolks anyway. Egg yolks are kind of like the fatty part of the egg and um, yeah, make it like a little bit fattier. But they can also make things creamier and stabilize things. So rather than wasting the egg yolks, I'm gonna take one of my egg yolks, boom, and sit it in there. I'm gonna get my noteworthy spoon. 
Da, 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 da. Oh, look at you. Even though the lemon curd was probably made with about a billion egg yolks anyway, we might as well use it. So the great thing about these as well is they come in your own sort of tray that can go straight in the oven. So we can load the lemon curd directly into this. Like that. <laughs> that is strangely fun to do. On the tray like this, nice and stable. And now, speaking of something that's finally stable, not a horse, a meringue. So I'm hoping we can just uh, sit it on top. <laughs> that was amazing! All right, do, 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 do. in this goes, and I'm a little bit uncertain as to whether to start my other steps yet. I might just, I don't know, I might just focus on this. It's only gonna be 15 minutes. So whilst I do keep my eye on that, I wanna show you something I picked up the other day. Uh, with the kids, we went to a garden center and this thing, it blows bubbles. But not just any bubbles, these, a pet-friendly peanut butter bubbles. I teased this on my Twitter. Uh, Boston and Amy aren't so sure about it. All right, stay there, ready? Steady. Bubbles, they're peanut butter bubbles, eat them. If they're normal ones, Boston goes, there you go. Go for it, mate. They're bubbles. No? Brilliant. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's really, really wobbly. I think the heat's like really warmed that lemon curd up, so I spilt it a little bit. And the meringue has shrunk a teeny bit, but it's charred. So I'm gonna let this cool down to room temperature and then bung it in the fridge whilst we do our other three recipes. Okay, next up, one of my favorite types of food is Mexican, uh, it's like Senor Bean over here. And quesadillas, for some reason, are probably my favorite. I love the charring effect that you get. And there's also a teeny bit of skill involved. I'll show you a hack on that. We're gonna do some pepper, roasted pepper, quesadillas. And what I also love about it, get yourself a really nice, deep, hard, high ridged griddle pan. If you can, you can do it in a frying pan. Done that, you can do it in a microwave as well. I'll show you that another day if you want. But you can actually build it in the pan. One man, one pan. So you're gonna need some tortillas. Remember we made some of them quite recently. We're gonna need one straight in the pan. About there. We've got some grated cheese as well. And this is what we're gonna flavor it with. What I was gonna do was just buy a load of peppers and roast them so you caramelize them and they blister. I love that sweetness that comes out of it. But by buying it in a jar like this, it's already marinated, it's already charred, it's in sunflower oil, so it's just kind of, it's got a teeny bit of extra cheating flavor in there. That's why I'm going for it. Otherwise, just blister up some peppers. So it's just really a way of, <laughs> it looks a bit like a tiger. Sort of just taking advantage of those oils in there as well, all that flavor. So I'm just gonna, that's the other cool thing about it, because it's been sort of sat in there marinating, they're super soft. There we go. Look at that. Oh, it smells so good. But it's nice and even as well. The cheese is kind of like the main thing here. It kind of acts as the glue. So try and get it as covered as you can. And then we'll just bring the peppers in and layer them on top. Squish it down a little bit, because you do want it to be flat. I tell you what, scrap the quesadilla idea. Just like fry that now, like bung it in the oven, some more cheese on top, which you're about to do. That would make a, like a tortilla pizza, which is a recipe. It's a cool thing to do. Let's get some more on top. There we go. Lid on. Onto there, and it will not take long. Once this heats up, you get these amazing char marks. Okay, it's turn time, and I actually bought a few more of these the other day because I absolutely love them. I'm gonna sit it here just so I'm quite close and I can show you better. So. That is off the heat, it's very hot. I've turned the heat off the hob for the minute just because I'm trying to be safe today. I'm gonna stick my plate on there, okay? Hold down, whoop, like that. And then off. Huh? Check that out. Obviously you wanna get it back in this, so what you do, you get another plate the same size, or you could if you want, just shimmy it in, that'd be fine. Flip it over, whoop, like that. You sit it on, you get your other oven glove, you can do that a bit more neater if you want. And then you do one quick Boom chicka wow wow. Heat it up again on your hob. So I've got a board to put it down on, it's just finishing off. And what I'm finding is oils, the peppers have sat in, they're kind of infusing it. The flavor's drilling into the tortilla. So it's kind of like an added bonus in there. Nice. Oh, and what I like to do 
is just, oh my gosh, whilst it's still warm, cut it into quarters like that. Make sure you go all the way through and you've got a gorgeous quesadilla. I really, really want to eat that now. But we've got two more to do. Next up, we're going to do some teriyaki chicken bites, which would actually work well as a main meal with some veg and some rice or something like that alongside it. Three ingredient teriyaki chicken. I wish I had a fourth because I want to sprinkle sesame seeds on top, but you, you can do that. Get yourself a pack of uh, mini chicken fillets. Look at that, straight out of the pack. We're using any of the natural oils that chicken has because obviously we're not allowed to, so use a good, decent non-stick pan. A good, <laughs> they said goose. Love it, because we can just put that to one side. Jug. This is 60 grams of brown sugar. And this is some light soy sauce, but I'm basically gonna empty the entire bottle in because it's gonna make a sort of marinade that's gonna bubble and simmer into the chicken with the sweetness of that sugar. Just gonna give that a, a courtesy stir, that's what I'm gonna call it, a courtesy one. It doesn't really need it, you're just doing it because you're polite, like the kind, loving, cooking person that you are. Let's get this warmed up. Moments where we made the quesadilla before, so make sure the chicken's all evened out. If you wanted to, you could cut this into smaller, like bite-sized chunks. But what we've got to do right now, we actually do this with thighs and wings as well, all that stuff, all different parts of the chicken. Apart from the carcass. So I got a bit passionate about it. Uh, so yeah, literally cook this through fully. So we want it white. It's gonna be a good 15 minutes. Here we go then folks. Nice brown chicken on both sides. So I'm gonna pour that marinade in. See that? Oh my gosh. Let it drench, let it coat. See that bubbling? Oh, so good. But it's gonna caramelize with the sugar in there. So do sort of turn the chicken still and get it coated both sides. Oh my gosh, I love this. Reminds me of cola chicken. That's a recipe for my first cookbook. Insanely naughty. Now, I wasn't gonna do this, but I thought I'd show you anyway. Look, what I'm doing there with the spatula, I'm just pushing it down and I've cut into that chicken and made like a little bite-sized piece like that. So if you wanna do that, I think I might as well start doing that to all of it now. The chicken is so soft. It's probably better if I jump back to it now. Can you see how much that's reduced down already? These little bite-sized pieces. Ah, oh, keep going though. Here we go then, nearly there. Look how it's almost simmered off. It almost looks like something different, like it's sort of tanned the chicken, but it's stained it in the sugar and the soy and it's disintegrating. The chicken's gonna be tender, but it's that marinade that's gonna give it so much flavor. Oh my gosh, I totally <laughs> forgot to press record on the camera. I just pushed these out and I was just saying how it's hot sugar. Please be careful. And it's a perfect time now with it being sticky to just get some sesame seeds on whatever because then it will just stick to it and just add even more to it. I'm so tempted to do that, but I ain't breaking the rules. So for the drink, we're doing a non-alcoholic champagne. I wanna thank Andy for sending me this one through my website. It's a combination of sparkling grape juice, pineapple juice, and ginger ale, not ginger beer. It turns out ginger ale and ginger beer, I didn't know this, a, a three different thing, two different things. Ginger beer is actually brewed, whereas ginger ale is just more of a carbonated ginger sparkling drink that you find as a mixer with alcohol normally. I didn't know that, I'm sure you do. And all I can think of ginger ale is that a refrigerator was filled with TV dinners and ginger. Was that from a song? It's a song that's always in my car. Ah, oh, that's it. There's a teenage wedding in the old folks wished and well. Pulp Fiction. Yes. That reminds me of years ago when I did a like actual Pulp Fiction tribute. No, good. Memories scattered pictures, but the stars are just behind. All right, so pineapple juice is pineapple juice. You know, it's a common thing that you see on all juices now from concentrate, but made with 100% fruit juice. It gets you, it's like, oh yeah, it's 100% pineapple. It's from concentrates, it's not. So this is uh, Schlur, which is the sparkling grape juice. I didn't think I'd had this before, but I think every single Christmas it's on some sort of table, a family thing, so I've probably had it. Yeah, it's all right, that is. And here is the ginger ale. Oh, diet ginger ale, nice. Oh, wow. And it's this thing. Ooh, tangy. That is the beast. No, wrong word. The captain, the boss man, the leader of this recipe. So it's two parts to this and one part of the other two. That's the only thing you need to remember. Oh, and let's put the sexy lens on. So I've never been a massive fan of uh, champagne. I did go to a wedding once in London, a very, very posh one. And all the drinks, me and my friend, uh, we went from Western Supermare, which is where I live. It's very expensive. And there was a lady like handing out free champagne. So we were like, oh my gosh, we need to drink this because it's all free. Because later the bar's going to be so expensive because we're in London. 
Uh, and it turned out, me and my friend both had about five glasses of champagne before the actual wedding thing had started. So I'm doing 200 mils of that. And let me tell you, that night, the West Country represented the wedding land in London. Oh, we danced, we partied hard. That's, that's pretty much it, apparently. Uh, I think I'll just stir it together. Oh. oh, I like the foam on it, look at that. It's no expense spared when you come to our house, folks. We don't even own a champagne glass. This is a plastic disposable one. But anyhow, I really hope that's stable. Look, it's sat in the, the neck of the glass. This is supposed to be it. That That is a free ingredient non-alcoholic champagne. Well, while I've got that sexy lens on, I brought the quesadillas in just for, I don't know why, I actually don't know why I did that. Uh, but you can get yourself a cocktail stick with your chicken like that, just in a little pot, and you know, as a little bite-sized thing. Nom, 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 nom. Actually, you might want to see it. Nom, 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 nom. Taste it. There is our lemon meringue pie. You really want to keep this chilled until it firms up. It still hasn't entirely. Just bear in mind that the meringue did shrink back as I baked it, but obviously you can make a meringue properly without the sugar in it, so it should be glossy. But it, as a concept, it works. All right, let's do this. Oh, wow. That doesn't really taste like champagne at all, but there's a, there's a hint of the grape in there, but it's a little bit fiery. That's really refreshing. I like that a lot. There's a teeny bit of tang in there. The pineapple is subtle. It's not too much. You're really getting the grape and the ginger and it tastes great. Oh my gosh. Wow. It's got a sticky coating on it. The chicken is still tender, but it's like a glued sort of, there's the saltiness obviously of the soy, but it's just enough balance with the sweetness, the tang. I just want to put sesame seeds on it, but oh. Quesadilla, it's a bit cold now, but this is a random fact for you. After I've had cheese melted and it goes back to like this, I actually like it. It's weird and I like a cold quesadilla. It's not my choice. I prefer it warm, but I can eat a cold one. Oh, I think that's the thing with the good quesadilla is the fillings, the cheese and the pepper is great. The peppers are moist, they've got that marinade in it as well. But it's actually the caramelization and the charring of the tortilla. If you can nail that, that is what drives that flavor into it. It's just, yeah. Oh, meringue pie. I should have a massive bite of that. That is super good, but I'd say it's maybe slightly more of a hack, that one. A decent lemon meringue pie is just a teeny bit more effort. I'd love you to do it. So that is it. If you have missed any of the others on the 4321 playlist, have a bar for now, check it out. And if you try any of these recipes, do send me your pictures. I love retweeting them and sharing them because you inspire me to inspire you. Keep it going, guys. Love you. See you next time. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. I often wonder, Amy, is your nose like going crazy when I'm cooking? Or do you just want to have a sleep? Great. Because Amy's lived with another family before us, I think she's kind of like, yeah, I'm all not too bad, I'll just sit over here. Whereas Boston, he's kind of like been with me from the start. So like, this is your life, mate, isn't it? You just sit in a kitchen. He's actually the health and safety department. Depugment. <laughs>